God is good. God is good. God is good. For all those that have feet and able to stand in the house this morning, please stand to your feet and reverence the Lord. Amen. Because the place that you are in this morning is holy. You're standing on holy ground. Amen. And we want to honor the Lord today for what he has already done in the house. Amen. For what he's yet about to do. Amen. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Because God is good. Give him praise. You got to feel something down on the inside of you today. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Come on, Basil Creek. Give him praise this morning. You can't be tired in your bodies because you didn't have to go to work today. You can't be tired in your bodies because God has woke you up this morning, clothed in your right mind, strengthened you in every limb that you have. God has given you breath in your body. You cannot be tired and sleep on the Lord this morning. Amen. Come on, Basil Creek. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 I bless his name. God is good. Amen. God is good this morning, Basil Creek. God is good. I bless him for you. I bless him for you, and I bless him for you, amen. I bless him for those that are on the website listening this morning. I bless him for those that are on the phone lines listening this morning. God is good, amen. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him honor. He's worthy. He's worthy this morning. I say God is worthy. He's worthy to all praise, glory, and honor. That is due unto his holy name. Amen. I bless him today. I bless him because he is the shepherd of our souls. Amen. He will lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen. I bless the Lord. Has he done anything for you? Has he done anything for you up until this point? Has he done anything for you? Has he done anything miraculous in your lives today? Has he done anything in anybody's family today? Has he saved your souls this morning? Are you saved today? Hallelujah. I bless the Lord. Amen. God is good. He's good this morning. And I honor him because of who he is and all that he is and all that he will forever be to every one of us. Amen. Saved or unsaved, God is still good. Yes, he is. Father, we bless you this morning. We honor you, God, because of who you are. We thank you for this blessed day, O oh Father, a day that we have never seen before and a day we will never see again. We thank you, God, because, God, you are God that sits high and look low. We thank you, God, for breathing the breath of life in our bodies. We thank you, God, for watching over us as we slept last night in the very image of death. We thank you, God, for keeping us, O oh God, even though we don't even know we're being kept sometimes. We thank you, God, for ordering our footsteps, O oh Father, in your word each and every day. Father God, we ask that you forgive us of our sins this morning. Oh God, because we've sinned and fallen so short of your glory. Have mercy upon us, oh Father. Create within us clean hearts and renew a right spirit, oh God. God, purge us and cleanse us, oh God, from those things that so easily beset us, Father. God, renew our minds and strengthen you today. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Oh God, deliver us, oh Father God, from those things, oh God, that is a hindrance to our walk with you, oh God. God, make straight way our paths, oh Father God. Let your word, God, come easy to us. Anoint us afresh, oh glory to God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we ask him for a fresh praise this morning, oh God. A fresh praise in the house, oh God. A fresh praise in our spirits, oh God. A fresh praise in your word this morning. God, do the miraculous in this house today. God, let your anointing, God, come and rest upon us, oh God. God, saturate us today, oh God. God, do a new thing in the name of Jesus. God, let your praise, God, fall upon us in the name of Jesus. Anoint our past in this hour, the shepherd of this house, oh God. Bless him, oh God, with an arraign of word, oh God. God, that will make preaching and teaching easy. Help us, God, to receive today 
what thus saith the Lord. Help us to move out of the way that you may be in the way, O oh God. God, sanctify us wholly. God, do what you want to do. Say what you want to say in the mighty name of Jesus. God, bind up any hindering spirits in this house. God, anything, God, that will hinder the flow of the almighty God. Anything, God, that's a hindrance, oh God, to your word. God, we rebuke it, God, and cast it back into the pits of hell from which it come that it shall never rise again. God, touch every heart today. God, every heart that is burdened. Every heart, God, that is sick. Every heart, God, that is feeble. Every heart, oh, Father, God, that feels like that they can't go on another day. God, whatever, God, is flexing our hearts this morning, we ask you have your way, oh, God. Whatever it is, oh, God, that we're standing in the need of, we ask, God, that you meet the needs of your people. Have your way this morning any kind of way you want to do it. God, we're receptive of you as long as we know it's by way of the Holy Spirit. And God, as we move out of the way, as we sit down, God, we ask that you stand up in the mighty name of Jesus. God, take your rightful place in this house, in kingdom building with your people. God, continue to do what you want to do. Breathe the breath of life upon us, oh God, one more time. That God, that we may have strength to run on, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, as we continue to end this prayer, God, we we ask God that you continue, God, to look on those that are not here. Touch our families, oh glory to God. Touch our children, oh God. Touch those that are not saved today. Touch the sick, oh God, and confined. Touch God those that are on drugs. Touch the alcoholic, oh God. Touch God those with schizophrenia, with mental disabilities, God. Touch God in the jail houses. Wherever, God, we're asking you to touch today, and even those that we have not yet uttered, we ask God that you go and do it. Because, God, we know that prayer can go where we cannot. And, Father, we bless your name this morning by way of the Holy Spirit. And we end this prayer, God, telling you thank you. Thank you. And thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you. I'm filled with the transition. No one no, no, can move, can stand. You did build all the things in Canada. You just called to that unchanging 
Amen. Hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. He won't lead you astray. He will never forsake you. Amen. He is a good God and he is worthy. He is worthy to be honored today. He is worthy to be praised for you, you and you who are in the building this morning. We thank God and it's so good to see your lovely faces. Amen. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Come on and shout a hallelujah. Come on and continue to worship him. Amen. I pray that you continue to hold on. Amen. Our scripture for today is found in the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. The 13th chapter, and I will be reading it in its entirety. First through the 13th verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning in the first verse, you will find the word of God recorded on this wise. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keepeth no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the, put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. God's word for God's people. May we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, Lord. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 come on, help me, Jesus, 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 what's that name, Jesus, 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 Savior, 
name of Jesus should be praised. Amen. Amen. The name of Jesus, the name that is higher than every other name on earth, should be praised. Won't you take a minute and put your holy hands together and celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus. This is a celebration, beloved. Come on, welcome home. Welcome home, 2022. This is our homecoming, and we came here to celebrate Jesus. We came to glorify Jesus. We came to worship Jesus. That's what this is all about. I know you can't wait to get to the fried chicken, green beans, and biscuits downstairs, but this is about worship. This is about giving God his due. This is about lifting up the blood-stained banner. This is about discipling people in the name of Jesus Christ. This is about baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is about his body. This is what it's all about. It's about Jesus. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for all of you all here. Thanks be to God for all of you all joining. Look at your beautiful faces. Look at the beauty in this room right here. Look at all of the beautiful people of God, the body of Christ. There is nothing like it. You all are a beautiful body. Thanks be to God for each of you all. And welcome to this 2022 homecoming. We have an official welcome that we have an official welcome and I want to invite Sister Kennedy to come up and give our welcome right now. Come on and give her a hand clap as she comes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to follow behind that, but uh, homecoming is a celebration of giving 
well, I welcome you here this, this day to celebrate and to give thanks for 152 years of homecoming here at the Basel Creek. Homecoming is a time when the congregation comes together to give thanks for the sacrifice by our ancestors. Amen. And we, I, as I was writing this speech, I thought about it and I said, okay, uh, we always talk about my great great grandfather, Austin Stinson. He's, the sacrifices that he gave because he came out of slavery. His grandfather, well, his father was his slave master, which was his father. Austin, his name was Austin Stinson. He took his name after his slave master. And um, we always give praise to him for what he did and built the church that he built and the congregation that they built back in, um, what is it? 1886, 1866. Anyway, I thought about that. I said, okay, our ancestors, my grandfather, they made sacrifices, but then guess what? My mother, my father, Cynthia's father, Jennifer's mother, uh, Miss Leyland over here, Miss Leyland built two churches. We talk about our grandfather, he built one. Miss Leyland she came through two, she built two churches. Miss Jackson, she built two churches. So we need to sacrifice, they are our ancestors. They are living, but we need, to sac we need to celebrate them while they are here. And they sacrificed, the sacrifice that they gave starting back in 1970, 1977. So Miss Jackson, and then we have some that's on the sick list, Miss Green. Uh, She's not here today, but I always remember uh, back in the day, um, we woke up one Sunday morning, and we all, we have 10 kids in my family, but only five of us were going to church that day with Daddy. We got in the car, the car went start. So what do we do? And Daddy got out the car. He said, by the time I get to church, y'all need to be behind me. And by the time he got to church, and I'm like, I was about six this particular day I remember that. It was about six. So I'm like, I can just stay here with Mama. And my sister said, oh, no. They grabbed me by my hand. You come, you're going to walk to church with us today, too. My brother didn't have to walk, so my brother told me, he said, if you get tired of walking, I pick you up and I put you on my back. Okay, so we walked. And back in the days, the land was flat. You could see for miles around. So we had to walk through the fields. Of course, back then, we didn't have paved roads. And um, so we walked to church that morning. And my brother picked me up, put me on his back. And when we got to church, he put me down. And uh, we dusted off ourselves. I had on my little hair leather shoes and my little cute socks. And I'm going to have to walk through all this dirt. But come on. And when we got to church, I dusted them off and I put them back on. And my sisters, them, they dusted themselves off and they came on in church. And uh, I still, I was standing outside. I was still sitting in, we had an area over here where the kids, where we would play at. And uh, I was still sitting out there. And up drives Mr. Uh, John Green. He had just bought a brand new car. And I was sitting out there. Him and his family, they got out the car. And I looked and I said to myself, huh, I'm married me a man with a car. I'm not, I'm not marrying no farmer, I'm gonna marry a man with a job. <laughs> I didn't do too bad because, you know, we had to walk to church. But, no, there were sacrifices that we had to do back then to church. And uh, I don't know what's on the board out there, but I gave Grace some pictures of the Davis Inspirational. Right after the church was built in 1977, Davis Inspirational had our first anniversary in 1978. Yeah, woo! And we had... Uh, the church back then was orange, so she got the pictures up there. You can see the design of the church, the one that burnt down before this one. Uh, it was orange. We had on orange outfits, and you couldn't tell us nothing. We was, yes, sir. And over the years, we talking about sacrificing. We, I mean, we had to mind our mom and dad as we did what we were supposed to do in church. We participated in church. Everybody had to participate in church. And one thing we was always, most of us in, we was in the choir. And so, once the choir, Davidson's Racing got going from 1976 until 
But in a period in there, we traveled a lot with our piano player. Our piano player came to us. He was from Durham. He, um, he, used, to dr he used to play for Shirley Caesar. And so he knew a lot of people, so we did a lot of traveling with him to Durham, Burlington, all the way down to, on the other side of Fayetteville, all the way down towards Lillerton. We rode, we sung, we had a good time for a period of at least 1978 to about 1970, 1985. And between that time, we had 63 Dave's inspiration of members. That's a lot of members. We had so many members that the men had to stand over there behind the piano player. We had 63 members. And so, and so we think we used to about sacrifice. Homecoming is about sacrifice, what you did, what your parents did. So we made a lot of sacrifice as we did. We made a lot of sacrifice too because we, we had to be here. And, but, you know, those were good times. And hope times are going to be even better. And I welcome you here today, and hope, uh, hopefully, as I said, Austin Stinson was the foundation for Bass Creek Baptist Church. And uh, hopefully, after being fed by the words, that y'all will come downstairs and be fed by the kitchen committee. Thank you. And thank you, Sister Kennedy, for taking us down memory lane such a rich and robust history here that we are sitting on hallowed ground. Amen. We are standing on the faith shoulders of many soldiers in God's kingdom. And we ought to be grateful. Amen. We ought to be grateful. Come on. You know, this is the first Sunday in November, which means we want to pause and celebrate everyone's birthday. How many November babies do we have? One, two, okay, there we are. <laughs> there we are. Okay, come on, stand up. You ought to be proud. Come on. If it's your birthday, thanks, thanks be to God for another birthday. How many of you all know life is precious and is not promised? Amen. So come on, we want to sing happy birthday to you. Will you join the choir as we celebrate these November babies? for our announcements, but there's a special presentation I want to make today. I'm going to ask Sister Jackie Ferguson to come down. Sister Jackie, we love you. You know, she recently lost her husband, Howard, who cherished member and man of God. And we all miss you. But we're here with you. We're standing with you. We are your family. Amen. I want to present to you. It's a Bible and a hymnal. And I pray that the words in both of these books will bring you comfort at a more appropriate time. May God's word, may God's peace, and may God's joy be with you. So if you need anything,
Now I want you all to prepare your hearts and your minds and your calendars for the announcements. Amen. And directly following the announcements, we're going to have a special presentation from my friend, Brother Tommy McLean. Amen. So prepare for the announcements at this time. Good morning, Basil Creek Church family and friends, and welcome to our service. We're so glad you decided to join us for homecoming today. Please join us immediately after service for a nice lunch. We're excited to begin the process of reviving our children's church. We'll kick off with a special Christmas celebration on Sunday, December 18th. Please contact Rhonda Curtis if you have ideas or resources, or if you are willing to support this effort in any way. We need you. Tis the season. Please join the outreach ministry in ensuring that Christmas is merry and bright for local church children by visiting the Angel Tree located just outside the secretary's office or by donating gift cards in $5 increments. All toys and gifts are greatly appreciated. The men's mentoring program is back. Please join us in ensuring the success of students at Buckhorn Creek Elementary School located in Holly Springs. Please contact Brother Kevin Collins to get started. Attention ministry leaders, all ministries are asked to submit their 2023 officers by November 13th and their 2023 budgets by December 4th. Please submit this information to Deacon Izzard in our secretary's absence. Our church secretary will be out of the office from November 7th through about December 7th. If you need assistance during this time, please do not hesitate to reach out to your deacon. Join us for Bible study at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays via Facebook Live and the conference line. And make a note that Reverend Patterson's office hours are Tuesdays, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., Fridays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Saturdays by appointment. Our main telephone conference number is 605-562-8401. Access code 220-6554. Please join us on our conference line for prayer every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. And join us in praying at noon to intercede on behalf of our communities, our leaders, and our church family. Prayer works. The outreach ministry is asking each member to bring a food donation on the first Sunday of the month. Our food market is held every first Saturday of the month in the Aussie Stinson Fellowship Hall located on the lower level. Your giving and prayers are needed and most appreciated. Giving can be done through U.S. Mail, our church website, or drop-offs on Sundays. Blessings to each one of you. Stay strong, stay focused, and trust God. Good morning, church. With appreciation to Reverend Patterson and all of you, it's good to be here. My name is Alyssa Whitaker. And my name is Leighton Rodwell. And we are students at Howard University School of Law and organizers for the Young Black Lawyers Organizing Coalition, otherwise known as Y Block. The purpose of Y Block is to have black law students and black attorneys use our knowledge to protect the rights of black voters in states, several states across the country, including right here in North Carolina. Now, before we get into our presentation, I want to first explain that this is these resources are solely for informational purposes only, and this is not legal advice. Uh, so how many of you know that there is an important election coming up Tuesday, November 8th? There's a lot on the line, a lot on the line for our communities as well as our nation. This is also the first election um, since a raft of voter suppression laws have been enacted across the country. Uh, these voter suppression laws are meant to restrict your right to vote and to restrict your voice. It is imperative that we resist these efforts um, and make sure that your uh, ballots are cast successfully. And so I'm grateful for the opportunity to spend just a couple minutes this morning sharing five key steps that you can take to protect your vote in this election. All right, so the first step you can take to protect your right to vote is to make sure that you are registered. Mm -hmm. 
one of the tactics for voter suppression that this state has used is to purge voters from the registry. If you have not voted in 2022, go to vote.org and make sure that you are registered to vote. If not, you might need to take advantage of early voting. Step two, make a plan to vote and vote early if you can. So know when you're gonna vote, how you're gonna vote, and what arrangements are necessary such that you can successfully vote. Step three, this is for those who are planning to cast an absentee ballot. Your ballot has to be cast by Tuesday, November 8th at 5 p.m. So just to make sure, you might wanna cast it a little bit early, but the deadline is Tuesday, November 8th at 5 p.m. Step four, if you are voting in person, know your rights. So we have actually left some resources with, for you all. Um, you can scan the QR code and print off your informational resources to take with you to the polls. We want to make sure that you can cast your ballot with confidence. All right, and the fifth and last step, we hope that no one gets there, but this is so that you can protect your rights and if you have any issues on election day or when you are at the polls, I'm gonna give you a number. You can call this number. You will be connected with an attorney to make sure that your right is to vote is protected. The number is 1-866-OUR-VOTE. That is 1-866-687-8683. Again, 1-866-687-8683. Six eight seven eight six eight three, and you can utilize that QR code, which will also have this number. Um, thank you again for giving us some time to speak with you all. We are sending our prayers that November eighth will be a successful election day. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. And the title of this is This Homecoming. When I hear of homecoming, a celebration at grandma's house is what come to mind because she would always cook a big meal for this special time. She would always have plenty of cornbread, turnip greens, fried chicken, well-seasoned pinto beans. She would even have a new dish for us to try. Now, who can forget Grandma's good old-fashioned apple pie? These homecomings are still great today, but do you know a big and better one is on the way? It's the one we've never seen before. And it won't be at Grandma's house, but over on the other shore. At this homecoming, nobody will give their heart a search because nobody will be playing church. At this homecoming, you won't have to worry about the company you keep because there'll be no wolves to dress like sheep. At this homecoming, you won't be able to sneak back down your little secret path because God said a hundred, not 99 and a half. As church folk, we want every soul to be saved. So to every family and every friend, if your house is not in order, let the cleaning begin. Because at this homecoming, none but the righteous will be able to attend.
Good morning, Battles of Creek family. What a glorious day it is. Thank you, Tommy. That was outstanding. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. As you can see, the, the picture on the screen is the late brother Howard Lee Ferguson. Uh, today's scripture, I had a script, but you know, script don't. Uh, today's scripture amplifies what Basil Creek is in love. It's all about love. Uh, to just give you, I had a, I had to go to a reliable source to get some information. I had good information, but I needed some more information. And the reliable source was his wife, who was presented with the right hand of fellowship this morning. She was able to be at his last in-person class. And she said she had been thinking about it. But she hadn't made a decision at that time. What took place, though, uh, Mr. Ferguson, this is how I battle the creek. See, it's about you guys. It's about you guys are awesome. The ones that are here, the ones that came before you, that, led, that, that laid the stone for you to walk on to come forward, gave you that love that you show to each and every one that comes in this door because that's you, Basil Creek, and the pastor. What took place was uh, Mr. Ferguson had been told that church service was going to start at 1030. And when he got in the parking lot, the parking lot was full. Nobody was in the cars. So he, he, he didn't leave. He decided, well, I guess I'll go in. The post started at 1030. Well, as he was coming in, church members were leaving. So, but like I said, God is in all the details. God is in the details of your life. And what took place was two members representing the family of Basil Creek and their love brought him on into the church and introduced him to the pastor. From there, Mr. Ferguson went home and he told his wife how much love he had received from Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. With that being said, you guys were the turning point in his life to become a member of him. This is home church. Your love and your support in the past. That's where it comes from. So you never know who you're entertaining. None of us ever know who we're entertaining. He was a mighty man of God. He always used to sit in this pew right over here. And his wife told me at their home church where they came from, he sit in the same place. He was a man of habit. He has an extensive career, but I'm not going to get into that because that's not why we're here. Just know he was a mighty man of God. And by that love that he displayed to his wife about you guys from Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church, she took the right hand of fellowship. And so he lives on in memory. Thank you, Basil Creek. Come on, and let's give God a hand clap of praise again. Thank you so much, Deacon Elliot, for those kind words about our friend and church family member, Howard, and our new friend and church family member, his wife, Jackie. Welcome. Welcome to this part of the body of Christ. And thank you, Brother Tommy. I believe the young folks would say you got bars. Your bars are dripping. I think, did I use that right, somebody? Is it drip? Something like that. I don't know. What I'm trying to say is, man, you got skills. <laughs> okay? Thank you for that. All right, we're preparing for this pre-sermon selection and directly following that selection by our anointed choir. God has a word for the house. Amen?
Yes. Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Come on now. How many of us know our name is written? It's in heaven. Then sign your name. Can you imagine that, beloved? That the angels in heaven have write your name in the Lamb's Book. Come on and give God some praise in here. Can y'all help us? Can y'all help us sing it? Angels in heaven just shine my name. Angels in heaven just shine my name. I got a special request. Can we act like it's 1866? Can get y'all just to hum it? Can we just hum it? Let me hear you, Carter. Come on, help the choir out. Just, just hum it. past 150 plus years, all of the ministry, all of the saved souls, all the disciples, we are blessed, amen? We are a blessed people, amen? We are a blessed and highly favored people. And I am so grateful and I am honored to stand here behind this sacred desk where there were many, many gifted and anointed proclaimers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I am honored to be your head and flock leader of this great congregation. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to preach and directly following the sermon, we're going to have communion. And then we're going to have a couple special presentations, okay? We're going to celebrate, one, our softball team. Is our softball team here? You all just wave your hands so everybody see who you are. They good too, y'all, but we're going to celebrate them as soon as we, before we conclude service. And we're also going to give an official right hand of fellowship to Sister Jackie Ferguson. Amen. So you heard the scripture read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want to give today's sermon lesson the title, Nothing Else Matters. Will you say that with me? Nothing else matters. Come on, say it like you believe it. Nothing else matters. Pray with me. To the God of abundance, we thank you, Lord, right now for this preaching moment. God, we ask, Lord, that you would open up our heart gates our ear gates, God, that we might hear the word of God and be doers of the word. Holy Spirit, allow me to be reduced so you might be able to step forward, God, and do what it is that you want to do. Now, God, in this moment of preaching, God, in this worshipful moment, Lord, visit us, teach us, convict us, empower us, God, that we might go forth into the world and do your will. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, before I get started, let me take a poll. How many of you all have ever been in love? Nobody. Did you see that, D? Nobody. Nobody in the choir? None of the... Uh, I, see, I see one usher. Let me ask one more time. Let me ask one more time so we won't be lying in front of heaven. How many of us have ever been in love before? Now, if you married or sitting beside your jank, boo jank, you better have your hand up. If you know me, then you know a few things about me. You know there are a few things that I love. I love Jesus. Amen. 
I love my boo, Jank Marcia. Amen. I love my family, both biological and church family. I love fishing. And it might not look like it, but I also love working out. But what I really love, Sister Faye, is hot sauce. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I love hot sauce, y'all. Texas Pete, Louisiana, Crystal, Tabasco, Frank's Red Hot, and that Chalupa stuff, I don't even know how to pronounce it. That's salsa. That's not hot sauce. I love hot sauce. I put that stuff on everything. It doesn't matter how seasoned the food is. doesn't matter what or where we are eating. I eat my hot sauce. I carry it with me. I carry it in my pocket. I have one in my, in my car. Right now, after we conclude this service, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm expecting some hot sauce to be on the table by my meat. I love hot sauce. The thing is, is that how can you be in love with an inanimate object? You know, I remember once we went to a restaurant that had a hot sauce challenge. Now, I ain't no punk, and I ain't scared of the smoke. At that moment, nothing else mattered but winning that hot sauce challenge. I ignored Marcia's warning. I disregarded the fact that it was too late in the evening to be eating spicy food. I threw away all my dietary caution to the wind. I took the hottest hot sauce they had. It was called Atomic Bomb. And I dashed it all over my food. I mean, I baptized it in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Took a bite out of that sandwich. Nothing happened, because I ain't no punk. Three seconds later, I begin to choke, coughing, sweating, spitting up. Like, <coughs> water didn't help me. Ice made it worse. There was no milk or bread available. I believe I died three times. Marcia was patting me on my back. The kids were asking me if I was all right. And all the while, the restaurant employees were sitting there like this watching me die from their crazy atomic bomb hot sauce. Now somebody will say, that's what you get. <laughs> but don't judge me, because all of y'all know that love will make you do some crazy things. Am I in good territory? You will deny your better judgment when you are in love. You will ignore sound advice when you think you are in love. When you are in love, beloved, nothing else seems to matter. That's why I want to spend a little time preaching today on the simple yet complex subject matter, God's love. The concept of love is probably one of the most misunderstood of human emotions. There is no spiritual gift nor any other human achievement that is more evident of a spirit-filled life than love. That's because love is not just a human emotion. Love is not just that funny feeling and that warm feeling you get when you are attracted to someone or something. Love is from God. I'm going to say that to two or three people listening on Facebook. I said love is from God. Not just any kind of love, but agape, unconditional love is totally based on the character and the ability of the one that gives that love. In 1 Corinthians 13, we recognize that text. It's a very familiar text, maybe too familiar. We hear it quoted at weddings. We hear it quoted at reunions, at Valentine's Day sermons and other celebrations of love. It's almost like the word love has become cliche. It's lost its value. We use the word to describe how we feel about materials. I love my house. I love my job. Ain't nobody saying that, but you know what I'm saying. I love sports. I love taking naps. You cannot be in love with an activity or a material thing, beloved. That's idolatry. If we really understood 
that love matters, then there wouldn't be any mass shootings. When love matters, the answer to violence is not more violence. When love matters, there is no voter suppression, no redlining and gentrifying underserved communities. If we understood love, there wouldn't be any mental health crises, no food desert, no home and health care insecurities. When you understand love, if we really understood that love matters, then there wouldn't be any proud boys, oath keepers, white nationalists, or neo-Nazis. Am I talking to anybody? Last year, the Southern Poverty Law Center tracked over 733 hate groups right here in the United States alone. If love mattered, we wouldn't need to be reminded that black and brown bodies matter. Because when love matters, nothing else matters. That does not mean that nothing else is important. It means that when we prioritize love, love becomes superior to all other attributes, all other achievements, all other situations, because God's love points us to Jesus. You did hear the Bible say, for God so loved the world. Come on, say that with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God loved the world, past, present, and future. God loved the world and everyone in it, no matter when or where or how you were born. God loved the world. That means your world too. That means your world too. God loves what's happening in your world. God cares about what you are going through. You cannot exclude yourself when offering love, beloved. Did you hear me? You cannot exclude yourself when you are offering other people love. God never said, don't be selfless. He said, don't be selfish. Out of the 613 commandments, Jesus said this, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is just like it. Love your neighbor, come on somebody, as yourself. All the law, come on, someone say it with me, all the laws of the prophet hang on these two commandments. Yeah, how can you say you love God and you don't love others? How can you love others if you don't love yourself? We were created as an expression of love, to give love and to be loved. You got to learn how to love yourself. Come on, stop all that self-deprecating behavior and, and words. All you need to start affirming yourself right now. Come on and say it with me, beloved. I love me some me. Come on, you ought to caress yourself and hug yourself right now and say, I love me some me. You ought to give yourself a hug right now because you ought to love yourself. Come on, I'm going to keep going until somebody prophesies to yourself. When you say, I am loved of God. I can love myself. I am blessed of God. I can love myself. Health and wealth are in my future. I wish I had two people who love themselves. Come on and speak to yourself. I am the head and not the tail. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I can love me because Christ loved me first. Because of love, God hears us when we pray. God's love is, listens with intention when we pray. When the cares and the pressures of this life weigh you down, when you are teetering on the cusp of a breakdown, 1 Corinthians 8 says God's love will build you up. Is there anyone who needs to be built up today? Come on, I know I see some people that are down in their ups. I see some people that feel like they're being ground into powder. There's some folks under the sound of my voice who feels like their life is dropped and shattered into a thousand pieces. I want to encourage you today, beloved, on this homecoming that God's love will put you back together. God's love will make you better than you were before. 
like a beautiful stained window glass. All of the pieces and shards from your future, all of the pieces and shards from your past, God will take them all and make you a beautiful mosaic that other people will wander at. That's because nothing in this world or in the next world will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Love is here to keep you. Love will promote you. Love will encourage you. Love will convict you. Love should mature you. Somebody say it's time to stop being childish. You read in verse 13 or in verse 11, it says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when me, I became a man, I put childish things behind me. I'm telling you right now, it's time to grow up, beloved. It's time to grow up in God's kingdom. You have been in elementary school too long. God wants you to graduate. And the only way to do that is through love. Our level of spiritual maturity is not measured by how well you can pray, how many people you brought to church, how much you give in the offering, or how many scriptures you can quote. Even the demons in hell can quote all the scriptures. You cannot grow spiritually, beloved, through holding grudges, being jealous, spreading rumors, throwing adult temper tantrums, and having hate in your heart. It is impossible to say you love God and to hate God's people. That's because God is love. God's love is patient regardless of time. Love is kind even when it's mistreated. Love is not braggadocious or proud. Rather, love can celebrate even when God blesses somebody else with the very thing I've been praying for. You know what that means to me? That means my God does answer prayer. That's why I can celebrate with you, baby. That's why I can say thank God for him blessing you. That means God is in the neighborhood and my blessing is up. It's on the way. Sister Maya Angelou said this. Have courage enough to trust love one more time. And always one more time. That's because love keeps no record of wrong. Love is the skin that holds the body of Christ together. Love is the impetus for forgiveness. Love is the language of heaven. Love never fails because your God cannot fail. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Without love, we're just making religious noise. A church without love is Ichabod. God has left the building. Families without love are just strangers tolerating each other's presence. Marriages without love are just roommates with benefits. Love is more than that feeling that gives you butterflies. Love is action. The world thinks they understand love. Sister Tina asks, what's love got to do with it? Ladies love Cool James said he needed it. Mary J. Blige said it had to be real. Beyonce sang that it had to be on top. But God's love is all that matters because hear this, God is love. God's love is excessive. God's love is unconditional. God's love is unfailing. God's love is available to you today. You mean to tell me you don't love God? What's wrong with you? As long as my God loves me, nothing else matters. As long as God's love delivered me from myself, nothing else matters. If you forgive my sins, Jesus Nothing else matters. I'm almost done. Your love, God, is deeper than the deepest abyss. Your love, God, 
is too much for us to fathom. We can't even comprehend it. We can't even take it all in. Therefore, God says, if you can't hold it all yourself, you ought to give it away. Did you hear what I said? He said, my love is so thick and so dense that you can't take all of it. That's why I said, I'm going to give it to you. When you love me, you love yourself, and the overflow goes to other people. God's love deserves to be shared. It's overflowing, never in lack, always available. I'm done. For all you old school Christians, you remember this. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch. I know I got some old school folks in here like you and me. The song says they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. And for we, he died. There is no greater love than for Jesus to lay down his life for us. When I was lost and feeling down when I was seeking deep in sin seeking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me now safe come on beloved if you feel safe in love today say it with me I'm safe in the master's arms I'm safe in his presence I'm covered by his blood I'm safe because of his love oh, I know you felt flat when you came in here some of y'all need a musician I get it the religious folks need a musician but there's a few of us in here who came to celebrate our God that came for not form or fashion, didn't come out of tradition. I know you felt like you were low, but let me tell you something. God's love will lift you. Come on, say it with me. Love lifted me out of the depths and darkness, out of my own pity and shame, out of my depression. God's love. Ah, when God's love flows in, it's like the rising waters in a harbor. When the tide raises, all of the boats come up. That means that even if you can't celebrate your God right now, there's somebody who is beside you that when their praises go up. Come on, come on, somebody help me with this. Help me testify. There's somebody beside you. They, they don't look like it, but they feeling low this morning. But when you lift Jesus... When you lift Jesus, everyone, everything around you must rise. Come on, get it up, get it up. Raise your voices. Raise your hands. Raise your hearts. Give your God some praise because he's worthy. Because he's worthy. Because he's worthy. Because he loves you. I'm done. I'll leave you with what priest Peter Raymond Schulte said. We are one in spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will be one day restored. And they shall know that we are Christians by our love. And they shall know that we are believers by our love. And they will know that we are Basil Creek Missionary Baptist Church by his love. After the world and the heavens pass away, these things will remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them all is love. In the name of the Father, in the name of his Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Come on, if you believe that, let's celebrate our Lord. He is so worthy. He is so worthy. 
I don't understand his love. I can't comprehend it, but he is worthy. If you don't know his love, if you don't know God's love, you don't know his son, Jesus Christ, this is your opportunity. We open the doors of this church. For if you need to be saved right now, this is your time. Is there one under the sound of my voice that would give their life to Jesus right now? You are tired of doing it on your own way. You're tired of not having a plan for your life. But Jesus says, I will take over. That's why he wants to be Lord. Lord doesn't mean co-pilot. He will take over and lay out the plan for your life. You want to rededicate your life to God? Maybe you street off path and want to get yourself right with the Lord Jesus Christ, then this is your opportunity. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? If you need to be baptized into the family of the Lord, this is your opportunity. Will you come? If you're looking to join a beloved community of faith, that will love you until you produce the destiny and the purpose that God has created and put inside of you, then this is your home. You belong here. Will you come? Won't you come? Yes. Come to Jesus. Jesus, just now. Yes. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Bless your name, O oh God. Come to Jesus. Yes, now. He'll save you. Come to Jesus. He will heal you. Come to Jesus. Won't you come? continues to sing softly we're going to lift up the angels of this house the sick and confined amen that though they be away from us in the present they'll never be away from our thoughts and prayers sister Dorothy Davis we lift you up sister Deborah Washington we lift you up sister Texana Washington we lift you up sister Mary Davis we lift you up Sister Lola Booker, Sister Yolinda Utley, Sister Irene Barwin, Sister Rita Kelly, we lift you up. Sister Ruby Watson, who is at Wake Med, we lift you up. Sister Deborah Wright, we're lifting you up. Sister Dorothy Bell, Sister Lucille Moore, Sister Janet Curtis, we lift you up. Sister Mary Hood Saunders, Sister Margaret McLean, Sister Andrea K. Moore, Sister Christine Stewart, we lift you up. Sister Mary Ann Green, Sister Retha Robinson, Sister Serena Harris, Sister Tracy Taylor, we lift you up. Mother Juanita Davis, we're lifting you up. Reverend Clara Patterson, we're lifting you up. Sister Jean Hedgepath, we're lifting you up. Sister Dorothy McKinney, Deaconess Margaret Green, Deacon Catherine Jeffries, Brother Thomas Spence, Brother Alvis Walker, Brother Anthony Whitaker, Brother Tony McDowell, Brother Robert Jones, Deacon Oscar Steele, Deacon Jimmy Evans, we lift you up. Deacon Carl Tony Wilson, Brother William Hodge, Brother Wilbur Dunn, Brother Larry Norris, Brother Reverend John McCray, Brother Price Laster, Brother Justin Marleek Hodge, Brother James Turk Sr., Brother Floyd Monroe, Brother Lamont Pardon, Brother Antonio Lattimore, Brother Wilbur Dunn, we lift you up. Sister Deb, we're lifting you up. We mourn with Sister Mary Johnson and her family in the passing of their father, Mr. Marvin Johnson. We also mourn with the Estes family in the passing of Miss Cozy Estes Farrington. If you are in need of help or prayer, I encourage you to reach out. And even if your name was not called, know that God knows your name and he knows what you're in need of. And we lift you up. We are preparing to take the Lord's Supper together. I 
ask you to prepare your hearts and your minds. I want to bless this bread and this cup. Pray with me. God, we thank you for this bread that represents your body that was given for us. And this cup that represents your blood that was shed for us. Lord, I ask right now that we not take this and be unworthy of this cup and bread. God, but we ask that you remove all of our sins as we partake in this great meal together. In Jesus' name. Bible records that on the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, that he had a meal with his friends. And at that meal, he took some unleavened bread and he blessed that bread and he broke that bread and he gave that bread. And he said, to his disciples as often as you eat this do so in remembrance of me let us eat together and in the same manner that he took the bread he took the chalice he blessed it and he said that this cup represents the new testament my blood that will be shed for you and as often as you drink it do so in a remembrance of me let us all drink together thank you God We're preparing to go down from this portion of our celebration and homecoming. But before we give the benediction, I want to acknowledge our softball team. Will you all stand? All the members, come down front. Come on so we can see those beautiful shirts. Can y'all come down front for us? Come on. I already said it now. You got to come now. I'm going to give him a. What was our final record? Did y'all hear that? Undefeated. Undefeated. Come on, if y'all don't get on your. The glory of God is even in our sports. We are anointed. We are anointed. We got it. Y'all got it. Amen. Thank you so much for representing us. And how can we join you?
Amen. Let's come out and support them when you can. All right, man. Thank you all. Blessings. All right, Miss Jackie, come back down. <laughs> what a wonderful day to receive the right hand of fellowship on homecoming. Amen. It's been divine. What I'm going to ask you all to do as we consider our COVID precautions is we're going to ask you to stand up and hand, place your right hand in front of you as we welcome this new person to the body of Christ here, okay? Amen. Sister Jackie, as you see all of these extended hands, we welcome you into this branch, this part of the body of Christ with enthusiasm and excitement. Cannot wait to do ministry with you. Amen. Welcome to the family. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Yes, indeed. For the Lord our God is good. Amen. Amen. While you remain standing, we're going to quickly uh, bless the offering, bless the food, and then go down from this experience so we can join each other uh, and fellowship over a nice cooked meal. Amen. Pray with me. God, we thank you for all of the gifts that have been given to this house. Lord, we ask that you increase them and that you use them to continue to build your kingdom. Now, God, we ask, Lord, that you bless this food that we're about to prepare, that we're about to serve, God, and we bless the hands that are serving it, God. Let it be safe, nourishing to our bodies. Allow us, God, your presence, Lord, accept our fellowship as an act of worship. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be complete. Be of good comfort. Be of good and one mind. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. The grace of our Lord and Jesus Christ and the love of God and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and forever. And the people of God said amen and amen.